It's probably fair to say that music videos started things off for me. Back when I was doing A-level art, um, I was slowly moving away from drawing and painting and becoming quite obsessed with stills photography. And a lot of the music videos that I liked at the time turned out to be shot on Super 8. So trying some of that out seemed to be the next logical step. And it wasn't, I didn't do anything narrative. It was just all kind of weird stuff that I edited together on two domestic VCRs. And after graduating and having no more access to the darkroom, I became aware of this really thriving filmmaking community here in Nottingham, um, including lots of people like myself who were unemployed and not really sure where to start. Uh, and there was loads of enthusiasm, lots of collaboration. Shane Meadows would knock off a film in his lunch break. It was great. Uh, the first time I attempted a short with any kind of script, I got it really, really wrong. Um, I was adamant that I was going to shoot it on film because I was a real format snob and I hated tape. Um, so I'd have to shoot it on Super 8 because I couldn't afford anything else. Couldn't really afford Super 8. Um, and I just had a really strong focus on all the wrong things. Well, not really the wrong things, but just the not the priorities. Um, but something good that came out of it was, was that I immediately wrote and shot something else in a couple of hours on tape using nobody but myself on both sides of the camera. And it was like um, just a release. It was the antithesis of everything that I did on the previous short. And it only cost a fiver. And it went on to win uh, much more than that at uh, a film festival. And that's probably to blame for me still doing it today. Uh, I don't see shorts as stepping stones to features. They're, they're a very, very different beast to feature films. And I was never particularly in a rush to make a feature film because I didn't really have anything to say that warranted a 90 minute plus running time. Or if I did, I didn't really know how to script it and still don't. Uh, you have to devote years to a feature film. So when the shoot was finally over for me, I, I got stuck into some little experimental shorts just to try and wind down. Um, I don't know how many features I'll make, but I'll always make shorts. Uh, there isn't one magic formula to guarantee a good short, and I'm wary of anyone who says that there is. The best thing about shorts, though, is that they can be inspired by just about anything. You know, a character, an anecdote, a dream, a piece of music, a certain post-production effects, you know, even a title. Um, some films are complete stories, some are just moments. Some of them are entirely experimental. I mean, some are 30 seconds and some are 30 minutes. There's great shorts of all types and there's all sorts of rules out there about what you should and shouldn't do but I'm tempted to say just ignore all of them because as soon as short film becomes as preached, boxed and branded as, as the art of crafting a feature then all the stuff that makes them exciting is, is gone, I think. Well, I think while professional standard cameras and home editing systems have become so accessible and the number of filmmakers has gone through the roof, um, Unfortunately, it's at a time when funding for shorts looks uncertain, and I think the UK's got an excellent reputation on the international short film circuit, and over the last 10 years or so, we've been really fortunate to have schemes such as Film Council's Digital Shorts, who commissioned hundreds of films on an annual basis and, you know, covering every corner of the country. So while it looks like all that it may be coming to a close, or certainly under a big state of change, um, it's important that things like Kieran First Cut help keep the scene alive.